For those of you who might have missed out on the action happening at the African Individual Chess Championship, well, don't worry, I've got you covered. In this new series, we will analyze the intense games played on the top boards of the tournament. Comment down below if you have, like, you know, uh, a game in the tournament that you want me to analyze for you. If you're eager for more insights and more analysis from this event, simply show your support with a like, just a like, and a follow to stay updated. Okay, without wasting your time, we're going to move into the first game of the tournament. So this game was played between Mr. Adewoli Adeyinka Samuel and GM Amin Basim. Uh, Mr. Adewoli is the Vice President of the Chess Federation of Nigeria. Please correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, GM Amin is a Grandmaster from Egypt. Yeah, and if you also look at the rating difference, you'll see that you'll see that um, the rating gap is very much. Nonetheless, uh, Mr. Adewoli played a very good game. Both, uh, both players played uh, a pretty good game. And then we are going to look at the game now. Okay, so white started with f4, and then we had e5. So f4 is called the bird's opening, and e5 is called the from's gambit. I've not looked into the variation, so I, I don't really know much about the opening. Um, I, I normally reply f4 with d5. Okay, so uh, f takes on e5, and then d, d6. So that's what the from's gambit is all about. Gambit is a pawn. Uh, knight to f3. D takes on e5. And then pawn to e4. So you might be wondering why 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 did not take the pawn on e5. And you know the reason why why did not take the pawn on e5 is because or, or I think is because after bishop to d6 the knight is going to move back to f3, right? And then now you see that white and black have the same number of pieces on the board. And then white does not want to get into that kind of position where he's you know, struggling for, the, for, for development with black. Because as white, you have, to be, you have to lead in development, except when you accept the gambit, which white, which white did. But uh, white was willing to you know, give back the pawn and then just push in the center of the board. And then everything will be okay, right? So... Um, so yeah, pawn takes, and then uh, e4. White gave back the pawn, and then um, had a normal opening. So knight to f6, and then bishop to c4. So bishop to c4 is a good move, but it's not a very great move. And then um, the, 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 the move to be considered here, or to be played, is c3. And the reason why you want to play c3 is, now, whenever you play f4 as white, your the, the, the diagonal, this diagonal in your king side, is normally weak and then you don't want the bishop to get to that to c5 you know to terrorize your position or to get the knight to g4 ideas like that can come later so c3 is placed so that if if bishop moves to f4 to c5 then you can play d4 now and then after you know after ex d4 dx if dx cx d4 bishop will move back to c6 and then now you see that white has many options like many ways to develop uh, the, their pieces on the board right and it's going to be easy for white this diagonal is blocked from the bishop and then the knight can even harass the bishop and chase it away from that place later yeah so what who am i to judge bishop to c4 is a good move uh bishop to c5 was played and then queen to e2 defending the pawn on e4 so knight to c6 and then d3 so apparently in this position white had a tactical ish move to capture the pawn on f7 and then if king takes the pawn on f7 then you have um queen to c4 check king moves back to e8 and then you take you take the bishop on c5 right so but then uh but then d3 is also is also a move it's also a move to consider so we had d3 and then we had now knight to d4 just a minute Okay, so we had knight to d4 and then uh knight takes on d4 bishop takes on d4 and then pawn to h3 now pawn to h3 this is like uh it's it's called a, pro a prophylactic move and basically uh, you white plays this move to you know stop the knights from coming to g3 or stop the bishop from from moving to g3 and harassing the queen or harassing the, the diagonal this diagonal here so that's why h3 was played and it's, it's a good move so Queen to e7, pawn to c3, attacking the bishop, 
we should have moved back to b6 basically this is still the opening so everybody's trying to improve their pieces uh get a good position right so uh bishop to g5 developing the bishop and putting the pressure on the knight on f6 then we had h6 pawn sorry bishop to h5 to h4 and then bishop to e6 knight to d2 defending the bishop and then uh castles so now in this position now white has two main options right if you look at white king white king is in center of the board but then white king cannot castle because cannot castle king side now because of the bishop right so why can choose to castle queen side and attack on the king side or, or in the center of the board or white can choose to you know attack the king side or even attack from both sides and leave the king in the center of the board but then you know in, in chess we, when you you have to give to take right you cannot just you cannot just have everything to yourself so if you choose to attack on this side then your boots all of your sides will be in action and then you have to uh, kind of attack and defend at the same time right if you choose to to attack uh sorry to castle then i mean for me i don't really see anything wrong with castling but then if, if you castle your, your king this way then the the game is going to move over to the king side and then white does not have much issues if he castles if he decides to castle queen and uh, king side and attack on the king side sorry if he chooses to castle queen side and attack on the king side then uh, white has pieces like on the king side already so it's not, it's, it's not going to be much of a big deal for white and if, even if i choose to attack on the queen side it's, it's still going to be good for white right so but then so uh white chose chose to to attack on the queen side so uh, pawn to a4 to a4 and then um pawn to a6 rook to f1 putting pressure on the file so you can see that now white is trying to attack on both sides of the board now there's something very instructive here for you if you are attacking on both sides of the board it means okay so it, it's 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 very rare for you to find that you're attacking on the queen side and then your king is on the queen side most of the times you have it like this where you, you're attacking on 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 both sides and then your king is in the center or you're attacking on on the center and the king side and then your king is on the queen side something like that right so but in this case now we have there he's trying to attack on both sides and then um, and then the king is in the center of the board so what you should not do in this kind of position is to not open up the center of the board right because if you open up the center of the board then there's there's chaos happening everywhere you don't have enough time to defend and attack and defend and attack you have to 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 play a very sharp game right so rook to f1 pawn to g5 and then bishop to f2 knight to d7 pawn to d4 now this is exactly what i was saying so now you see that black is choosing to attack in the center white is choosing to attack in the center of the board and now if you look at it very well if if um black has okay let's say black takes white uh takes and then sorry no bishop bishop takes bishop takes bishop takes back pawn takes bishop takes bishop takes, uh, queen takes and now we have this kind of position these two points are going to be problem for white this rook is going to move to the center of the board you know harass this guy the knight is going to sorry the knight is going to the knight is going to move to f6 attack the pawn if the pawn moves forward let me just play it knight moves to f6 if the pawn moves forward you know you have this beautiful square on on d5 this point is going to be a weakness stuff like that right so um that's why that move was not very good because now you are giving black uh, a lot of play in the center of the board black already has even more space than you in the king side of the board so you don't even have enough fight on the queen side so that that's why that's why um playing uh, opening up the center of the board does not really work for white here right okay so we had um pawn takes in the game pawn took right why did no want to exchange too much um bishop took and then queen took on c4 so we had bishop to a5 attacking the knight on d2 and then um so here yeah, you don't want to stress the king too much why do not stress his king too much so he castled alongside right and then now 
now that white has castled long side you see that white also has white can just choose to attack on the king side of the board you can forget about attacking on the queen side of the board and attack on the king side and in the center of the board right so all of these things it's something that you know grandmasters see but we don't when we are playing our games so um let's continue long side castle and then knight to b6 attacking the queen queen to c2 queen to b4 so queen to b4 queen to b4 now queen to b4 attacks the pawn on b on, on a4 twice because the knight was attacking and then now we have the key, the queen attacking right so queen to b4 attacks it twice and the reason why this move is not very good is because the queen on on the seventh rank was doing a good job you know defending these two pawns right but now we have you can have a move like this and then basically we are we are we are attacking the f7 pawn we are attacking uh the we're, we're threatening checkmate so white is threatening checkmate so black will have to find moves like you know uh rook to d7 and after knight to f3 we are defending the pawn uh queen can choose to you know take on a4 and then and then have the exchange like this and the knight will jump to e4 to e5 attacking the rook attacking this pawn so it's going to be very hard difficult for what for black to play in this position right so where were we yeah okay so um queen to e seven. sorry queen to b4 was played and then white played knight to b3 right hanging the pawn but defending the pawn in the center of the board right and um so queen took queen took and then we had bishop to g3 threatening checkmate attacking this guy so again uh rook to rook, rook to d7 is the move to be played so rook to d7 was played and then we had rook to f5 attacking the bishop on e5 because now you're attacking it two times right uh bishop moves to c4 sorry to b4 um moving it away from attack and then also taking away this square from the knights so the knight cannot fork the, the queen and king so bishop to b4 and then we have king to b1 moving the king to safety i don't know how safe that square is though but because the, the queen is there i don't know where he was moving the king to but you know moving it away from the center of the body is also a good something yeah so king to b1 and then rook to e rook to e5 attacking the pawn on e4 so we had uh rook to c1 putting more pressure on on the c file and putting more pressure on the c7 pawn or square so we had rook back to c6 rook to c6 uh, sorry queen to c6 queen takes on c6 pawn takes on c6 and then rook to f6 so i, I don't know why why um, why did not take immediately because you see if you take if you take on on a, on c6 even if black takes the pawn on e4 then you have like some moves like like bishop takes on on c7 if knight if rook takes you take the knight and then this is this is kind of this is playable very 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 playable for us you have a passed pawn but you have to protect it very well sharp you can capture this pawn capture this pawn this pawn is going to be weak stuff like that right so yeah i, I don't know why like why i did not take right moved uh pawn to f6 no double attacking the pawns and then we had knight uh, sorry rook takes on e4 rook takes on c6 um knight to d5 bishop to e5 defending the pawn on, on d4 and then we had rook to e3 you know if uh attacking the knights attacking the knights yeah so what did he play he played knight to a1 and knight to a1 is not well knight e1 does not does not do very much good to white's position the the move will have, that will have been good will have been this move and then now black has a lot of things to worry about black has this point to worry about this point to worry about this rook to worry about you see many things to worry about and um why black is not going to really have much game like around the king side because the because he has a rook his knight is not going to be here forever he's going to move it away right so the best move here will have been to play knights to g5 right and then force the exchange of the bishop that's what will have been the best move for white to do for black to do so but um but he played uh knights back to a1 and then we had bishop to e7 because there was a threat of of this fork here so bishop to a7 
and then rook takes on h6 and now we add pawn to f6 and then bishop to h3 now even though you see that the position the materials are good if you look at the position very well or let me play the next moves um okay so rook to d3 was attacking the pawn then knight to c2 was defending the pawn and then we had rook to d um rook to d2 attacking this pawn so rook to g1 defending the pawn and then we had bishop to h5 bishop takes rook takes and then we had g4 so back to what i was saying the, the material is equal but black is have black has more advantage than white and now the reason is that if you look at black species black species are not sorry white species are not uh are not in harmony this species is misplaced like it's it doesn't really have it's, it's not it's, it is not where the game is happening black has a rook on the seven trunk which you want to have in the game uh g4 gives white gives black this this outpost um okay no you can't go there so gives like this outpost this pawn is going to be weak uh you have like a, a single pawn in the center of the board and an isolated pawn and stuff like that right so that that's why um playing sorry that's why that's why um, black is having a very good position than white so yeah g4 was played and we had rook to e6 and then now we had pawn to h4 so pawn to h4 was played and the game ended the game ended for for white so black played rook to e2 and then now there's nothing that white can do in this position uh if white moves to a1 or a3 then there's checkmate right if if white moves up here then there's going to there's going to be like um a loss of a knight <laughs> in that position so uh white will not uh, do anything about the position so white played rook to h8 check black responded with rook, um, king to b7 then we had rook to g3 rook takes on c2 rook to b3 check king to c6 and then pawn to g5 and then from this position now the game was completely losing for white uh black just you know picked up the pawns uh and there was nothing that white could do black basically just cleared the position right and then after after this move um white resigned because you are playing against the grandmaster you don't want to play against the grandmaster with a rook and a king and a pawn against two rooks and a pawn it should be kind of disrespectful you know something like that yeah so um that's that about the game and they, they both played very well because uh the engine gave them 90 percent accuracy give sorry give um black 90 percent accuracy and white had uh 80 percent of accuracy 83 percent accuracy so yeah the game was good the game went well they played very good but then uh along the line in the end game you know because of probably because of knowledge stuff like that black was able to to you know get white weaknesses and then capitalize on it so these are the standings currently in the tournament um there, there's been an there's been a power outbreak in in west africa so i'm not able to get the live stream of the games but then as soon as i get the live stream of the games i will i will do an analysis of the second round but for now i'm going to try and finish up the analysis of the first round i'm going to do i'm going to analyze the second board and the third board games and then we'll look at the second round very soon so uh if you enjoyed this video please again give me a like and follow please so i can be able to so i know that people like my content and then i make more content if you have any um if you have any contribution or suggestion you can you know where to meet me in the comment section down below and if you want me to you know um if you want me to analyze your games or sorry the, the game of the tournament then you can also tell me which game you want me to analyze and then i will look at it okay so thank you for watching once again i'll see you when i see you in the next video have a good day bye bye